Get inked. Get awesome. But whatever you got going aside, men guys are here. Welcome to FB Geeks. Here's the group, Eric, Dan, and Steve. Hey, Geeks. It's Tim Hoffman. What's going on? I was just eating some lunch. Is it like a cheese steak? It's pretty good. I made it at home. Anyway, I was just thinking about pens. And then I thought about you guys. I like pens. I like you guys, too. I didn't have any questions. I wanted to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> this is Fountain Pen Geeks Podcast, episode number 57 for Tuesday, January 29, 2013. We are recording live on Saturday, January 26th. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, geeks the world over, thank you for being with us today and welcome to another hyper fierce Narnar episode of Fountain Pen Television. My name is Eric. My name is Dan. And my name is Steven. And joining us today is our special guest, president of Pen Collectors of America, the Fountain Pen Community's very own and very darling, Lisa Anderson. Madam President, thank you for being with us today. Might I say you are looking, as ever, absolutely radiant. Woo! Well. <laughs> oh, we got a woo. Wow. Thank you very much for having me on. Thank you for being here. What would you like to talk about today? Uh, the intro was phenomenal. <clears throat> Which intro was that? Oh, yeah. Well, I guess it we should mention awesome. that. I, I kind of <laughs> sprung that on everybody. Uh, Tim Hoffman, uh, who in our forums is Maneuver and is also the author of all our bad cartoons, just called out of the blue during the week and left that message on our phone and I thought well that's, you know, that's a funny message we should probably play that but I didn't tell anybody here in, in, in at FPTV land that I was gonna do that so it kinda just struck us all funny and so I'm sorry if we giggled a little at the front at the beginning but thank you for calling Tim that was a, a phenomenal message we need more of those uh, anybody if you're calling if you're listening uh, give us a call Lisa yes actually a quick note about Tim. He actually brought his whole family to the uh, Philly Pen Show. Did he bring coffee? Uh, he did not bring coffee, and we just finished ours, so we're going to have to hit him up for some more. But he brought his sister Maggie, and then on Sunday he brought his parents, too. So he had his own little, like, pen posse. Pen posse. Could you keep his, could you keep his parents or, or, or just the coffee? I mean, I'm, I'm... <laughs> His parents were lovely. His sister was awesome. So, you know, he's raised them well. He's raised the money. Yes, he's good stock too. And we should, I guess, mention that at the DC Pen Show, he brought all of us coffee. Yes. I don't think Dan was there, so Dan didn't get any coffee. But it was yummy. Rumor is Dan doesn't much care for coffee. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't that's know awesome. that. <laughs> um, Lisa, you you wear so many hats. I think the hat you're wearing for us today is president of Pen Collectors of America. Correct. Can you tell us what is Pen Collectors of America, Madam President? You have the floor. <laughs> uh, the PCA is an organization of uh, a little less than a thousand members of uh, collectors of pens, ink, ink wells, um, mainly fountain pens, and we work together to um, keep the history of writing alive. Otherwise, uh, handwriting, cursive writing, which as you know is, is no longer taught in a number of schools, will be forgotten. And there are so many companies that have gone out of business, so many patents and inventions that have been made that are related to fountain pens. Um, and it's important to keep all that knowledge uh, active and available. Uh, speaking of knowledge, I completely spoke out of turn. You're not allowed to speak yet until you pay your fee, your guest fee. <laughs> And uh, in case we don't know what that is, uh, generally speaking, especially for first-time guests, we charge a fee, and the fee is one obscure word. And I imagine that Lisa Anderson has come up with something pretty obscure. So, Madam President. Scripturient. Can you spell that? S-C-R-I-P-T-U-R-I-E-N-T. -E Can you say it again for me? Scripturient. Scripturient. Mm -hmm. Scripturient. It's an adjective, if that helps. An adjective. Mm -hmm. So you are very scripturient? Uh, on occasion, I have been on known occasion. to be. Uh, does it have anything to do with writing? Script is in there. It does. Scripture is. Very so, much so. Is it an obscure word for a writer? Yeah, close. Close. Anybody else have a guess here? Someone who is sort of addicted to writing or has a strong uh, um, desire to write or something? Very, very, very close. All right. We'll just let that settle and move on again. PCA, Pen Collectors yes. of America. 
is, uh, uh, I believe you said something about maintaining the history of writing? The history and, and yes, keeping it alive. And, and how do they maintain the history? Uh, we have the largest um, online library in our archives that is available to members and it has ads, um, patents, uh, instruction manuals, anything and everything produced by um, all the different pen companies, um, magazine articles about different pen companies, about different products, uh, all available online in one place and it expands all the time as we get new information in. And so these documents are, are uh, older documents, you're saying, like yes. uh, pen catalogs from the 30s or something. Yes. Down there. Very, very interesting. What else does Pen Collectors of America do? We are at um, all the major pen shows. We usually have a table at uh, pretty much every show, and then we do presentations for children. That's pens. Uh, pens, pens for kids. Mm -hmm. uh, probably the, the most commonly known thing that we do is we produce the pennant. The pennant? The magazine. What is the pennant? The pennant is our print magazine. comes out three times a year. And, and most recently, at least since I've been receiving the pennant, it has always been a letter from the editor signed by you that I get to read. You read a letter from the editor signed by Paul Arano, our new okay. editor, That's and you read a letter from the president. The president is you, okay. Correct. I was Paul. the last one to say not it. But Paul's not the new editor, is he? Paul's been the editor um, for He's been the editor for two years, and he has signed on for another two years. All right, so he's been the editor since I've been receiving the pennant. Yes. Uh, a wonderful magazine. It is so nice to have a magazine about pens, an actual analog magazine that you can hold in your hands. But I also understand that you're going digital with that. Uh, digital in addition to, addition. not instead of. Not instead of. Yes. A lot of people were um, nervous that that meant we were going to go online only, and a lot of our uh, older members were very adamant that we they not lose the magazine. But I, I like having it in my hand. I mean, I would probably also read the digital version, but... Having a magazine in my hand uh, feels good to me. Dan, how do you feel about that? Well, I was just going to ask, um, can you share a little more details on it? Like, will it be like a, a Kindle subscription edition, or will it be um, just format on your web page, or how, how's it going to work? Uh, we're not I, – I went down to Kansas to uh, visit with the publisher, and they showed me a presentation of it. And as I understand it, uh, you will be able to log in from your – iPad or from your laptop, from your computer. Uh, I do not know if it's subscription or not. Uh, some of that I'm not quite up on, but I know that it will be. Um, you have to log in. So, so it'll be on it, the PCA website. There'll be a link, yes. Okay. But there'll also be uh, a different link as well that you can go directly to. But it's for members only, so it'll be another perk of membership. Uh, so that if you want to read it online, you can. Um, in fact, it may arrive before your actual magazine sometimes. Okay. Yeah, I definitely don't have a problem with that. Um, I know it's convenient. If you're looking for something specific, you can usually search through electronic versions, and I really, really like that aspect of it. But like you said, there's really no replacing the uh, physical copy. No, we will not replace. We will not do away with the, uh, the printed magazine. Very nice. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. it'll be cool. And uh, did the uh, PCA website recently undergo a change, or was that just maintenance? Uh, some of it was uh, maintenance. We had a little issue with a, a spam bot, uh, so we uh, updated the security a little bit, and then we, while we were at it, we just updated a bunch of new things, added some new articles, uh, put up some pictures from, I think it was the Columbus Pen Show. So. Okay, and how much is membership, and how do people join? A membership for U.S. is $40 for one year or 105 for three, which is a better bargain. And for international, it's um, 60 for one year and 150 for three. Brings so up another good question. It's called Pen Collectors of America, but is it for people outside of America? Oh, absolutely. We have global members, global membership, everyone, uh, all different countries. And how do people join? What's the easiest way to join? Easiest way is to go. <laughs> no, <laughs> I have a hard enough time logging into the membership database. No, um, go to uh, PenCollectorsOfAmerica.com. 
and there is a join button. So you go to the website, pencollectorsofamerica.com, find and click on the join button, and from there it's easy. You fill out your information, probably uh, pay with PayPal. Yes. Okay. Yep. Fast and easy. Fast and easy. And we'll come yep. back in a little bit, I think, uh, to talk more about pens for kids, which is an absolutely outstanding uh, thing that Pen Collectors of America does. But for now, why don't we talk about pen shows? Dan, what have we got? We have um, a few coming up. The closest is, well, that would be the Southwest Pin Show in Bristol, England. That's Sunday, February 10th. And we know someone who will be there? Sarge Minhas. Yes, the one-man pen show will be That's there. Right. And as Brian said last week, there will actually be two pen shows there. But yes, the Bristol Pen Show and Sarge's Pen Show. Mm -hmm. And coming up after that is the 25th LA Pen Show, February 14th to the 17th. Um, that's a big show, I think. Um, Lisa, you guys will be going there this year, right? Oh, yeah, with bells on. We've got four tables. Four nice. tables. I don't think they had four tables available. How did you swing that? Oh, you're Madam President, of course. I know people. You know people. Yes, and I'll be there. And there's <laughs> always lots going on. Um, the show opens uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday for people with a trader pass at 8 a.m. Uh, general public is allowed in on Sunday at 10 a.m. for $7. An excellent price to get into what is probably one of the largest pin shows in the country. Um, you can find out a lot more information at LAPinshow.com. Yes, it's a fun, fun show. I like it especially because it's practically in my backyard, and it is, as Dan says, uh, probably just a, a smidge smaller than the DC show, if I had to make a comparison. Lisa, you have been to the LA Pen Show in the past. Yes, I was there about eight or ten years ago, a couple years in a row. I wonder if it's grown since then. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, so it'll be nice to have you back. Uh, and is uh, for, for anyone who might not know this, Lisa Anderson is married to Brian Anderson, who has been a guest on a few occasions on our FPTV show. Uh, is this Brian's first time at the LA Pen Show? Yes. He's Bad. very, very excited, doesn't even come close. He's going to like this. He's going to like this a lot. Oh, yeah. Um, let's throw it over to Doc Brown here. Doc, take us through the polls, just you know, so we give you something to say. <laughs> well, I wasn't being bored or anything. Um, so we, we, we've we had a, a poll question uh, last week, and wasn't it also the week before that, actually? No, this was one week poll question. Oh, this was a, just a one week poll question, which was, which company is producing Twisby nibs this week? And Lisa that Anderson pro can probably answer that for us. <laughs> I like the poll responses. <laughs> <laughs> Some Brown, of those were highly entertaining. What were the poll responses, Doc Brown? The poll responses were the, the vast majority of people said that Joe was actually mm. making uh, nibs this Joe. week. Now, what, what uh, exactly does vast mean in your vocabulary? Uh, in my vocabulary, I say that's 53% exactly. That's a vast majority? or is it That is a, well, a vast a majority. majority. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, I mean, if you consider that the next category was Bach with just 15% of the votes, I would say it's a vast majority. I still, um, don't, still don't agree, but go on, continue, please. Well, I mean, if it would have been 98%, it would have been a super vast majority, but I mean, that's, it wasn't, so this is what I got, <laughs> man. Uh, then we have Cracker Jack at 9%, and Bic, Bic at 7%, which is uh, very fascinating. Um, I like Cracker uh, Jack myself, I liked it, I like that as an answer. I think then, I voted for Cracker Jack. <laughs> I voted for Cracker Jack. Wouldn't put it past any of us to have voted for Cracker Jack. Yep. So what 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 do you do with a Cracker Jack nib? You eat it after you use it, or how how does that work? Because I'm I'm trying to. You yeah. save that. Does, does does Doc Brown even know what Cracker Jacks are? No. Uh -huh. I, was, I was guessing some type of. We have to send you a box of Cracker Jacks. That's on my list. That is All on. Right. My list. Sounds good. And we have a new poll question that's already up at the site. What is it, Doc Brown? It is, what is your general pen-to-ink ratio? And then we have a bunch of answers to choose from. A, I would say a vast amount of answers to uh, choose There's from. There's 10. We there are 10. Because, it, you know, <laughs> how, how am I supposed to... People have to fit into one of these 10 categories. Exactly. So that's... For example, one answer is I have one ink for every pen. Um, I have about two pens for every ink. I have some pens and a gazillion inks, and apparently I'm collecting inks. Those are just, you know, sample questions. I have a question. Do ink samples count? That's why I specifically did not say bottles or, or, or cartridges. I just 
said ink. So yes, in my mind, when I counted my inks to figure out where I am, I counted my samples as well because they're they're. But what if you have only one thirty-two ounce bottle of new? <laughs> How does that count? I mean, I don't, this is. Well, okay. That's what, that's an ink in my mind, but okay. you're the one who would have to answer it. Uh, does anybody know where they might fit in on this right now? Well, I I looked at mine and this morning, and just counting bottles, I would say I have two pens per bottle. But now, if I throw in ink samples, I've probably got two inks per pen. Two inks per pen, as opposed to two pens per ink. And right. see, I thought before I went through the counting process that I was going to probably say I have some pens and a gazillion inks or, and or apparently I'm collecting inks but once I counted everything I've got about one pen for every ink which I thought was which surprised me now I don't know Doc Brown I, I just picture you with a wall of ink that's off camera we never get to see it no that's no no my, my ink is all stuffed in drawers um, I, I think uh, I, I think I have way more pens than I have ink and Lisa, you don't get to count the, the, the inventory. No, no, no. This is just personal. <laughs> I probably have. Because <laughs> that would be a completely different answer. I have, I'm collecting ink for that. Uh, probably. Just guess. Yeah. Two pens for every ink. It's either you one think. to one or two to one, but I have a lot of ink. Oh, so. How much ink could you possibly have? We know that... Uh, Brian has admitted to having stopped counting his pens when he got to 1,200, which means he's probably up to at least 2,000 by now, and you have married him, and we've all heard you say it, what's his is mine, what's mine is mine, and <laughs> you have well over 2,000 pens. You're saying you have about 1,000 inks? No, I'm saying that, I'm uh -huh. not saying I have that many pens. <laughs> I have my own, tr uh, my own drawer in the pen chest. Um, but I don't count. I don't count Brian's. I mean, he collects those hard rubber things. Those are like <laughs> tires. Yes, the tires. <laughs> like pens made out of tires. Uh, I have no interest in hard rubber. So my own pens uh, in my own tray. I'm probably either one pen to one ink or two pens to one ink. Well, Brian, I know you're listening, so you heard it here first. She has no interest in your hard rubber pens. He says it's oh, a lie. <laughs> <laughs> no, he knows that and he loves it. I will but, mention that the idea for this poll, I'm sorry to have cut you off, Madam President, you were saying? Uh, just uh, the auroras are mine. <laughs> yeah, that comes through on your podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch my Don't auroras. Touch my auroras. The idea for this poll question came directly from Adam, who made a comment in the Rickwell wall hanging pen cases post. He said, I hope they develop a case for ink bottles. Uh, my ink collection outnumbers my pen collection. And he suggested that we make that a poll question. And here it is at the website, even as we speak. Mr. Smith, yes, you're going to update us on the January month-long Delta Fusion 82 giveaway, are you not? I am, and All it's right. coming to a close quickly. Um, next week will be February 2nd is when our show goes live, and we will be drawing the winner then. So there might be some time to get your entry in. I mean, if you're listening to this live, you could probably priority mail it or you know whatever um, but um, I think most of them are in it seems that the most popular color for the Delta is black white or fuchsia of the seven colors available so it was interesting to see that so after black and white fuchsia is the top color yep interesting yep uh, cool. how could that be <laughs> I don't know. Like, <laughs> Some nut here has a fuchsia delta fusion eighty two. I like the blue. Yeah, is you know the brown one. I mean, I'm not a big brown fan or brown pen, you know. But like, I mean, just I think any material is going to look excellent because it's just so complex. It's got a little bit of shimmer in it, and I mean, there's a lot of depth to it. I don't think you could pick a bad color there. And do you have any idea? And can you share it if you do? about how many entries we've received for this pen? I, we... I've not counted them up yet. Um, I, I know it seems like we've got more than at least the past two or three entries. I mean, I've got a nice box full of entries that I've, I've read through. So. so it's a popular, popular giveaway. Yes, it is. Good. Now, uh, we're going to go somewhere else. Uh, we're going to go and have... You mean like another talk. room or should you have <laughs> Doc Brown talk to us? Uh, uh, but while you do, before you talk to us, I'm going to 
give you an intro. People have asked me to review an ink that I don't particularly like. This is it. All right, so you heard it here first. This is an ink that he doesn't particularly like. Like right. I give him a hard time because he, he does his ink encyclopedias and then he comes on the show and says it's a fantastic ink. Now, perhaps he doesn't say that every time, but in my mind he says that every time. So I specifically asked him to, wow. to review an ink he doesn't care for. And before he sits here and says it's a fantastic ink, I wanted to show this piece of the video <laughs> that proves he doesn't much care for this ink. Dr. No, Brown. Right. Yes. Well, you see, the, 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 the problem with the ink is that it is extremely dry. And, I mean, it is so dry that I have put it in a few pens that after a few days just stop writing. They would not write anymore. Of course you could clean them and, and then they would write with other inks, but with this particular ink it's just a, a pen stopper. I don't know what what exactly it is. On what the other hand, talking about? we are talking about Noodler's Manjiro Nakahama aka Whaler's Sepia, Whaleman's Sepia, uh, which has a lot of interesting properties. I think you can pour bleach on and then it turns orange or something. I'm not in the habit of doing that with my writing, so that doesn't really matter a whole lot Some to me. Some people do that. Some people do that. Some people do that. I know. I mean, there's a whole bunch of people out there just write pages and then pour bleach on and see what happens. And apparently with this ink, you're in the right place. Um, it is a very... Well, it's, it's a sepia, so it's a very dark brown, and when it dries, uh, it, it turns somewhat grayish into a dark gray. And I, I um, uh, Nathan Tardif has a, an extensive video on this uh, which uh, in which he shows all this and discusses a, a lot of stuff, and he does pour bleach on, and he does do all the stuff. So the, my, my big issue is just the dryness. Now, funnily enough, when I was doing the writing samples, uh, there was no dryness at all. The ink... Uh, well, just seemed to flow pretty good and pretty well, and there was no odd stuff going on and no particular dryness. So, I don't know whether all of a sudden, I, I put it in one of those magic vials you you send me, the glass ones. May, I don't know whether that suddenly made it wetter, just they putting are, it in there, are. and then all of a sudden it's, it's magic. magic. Yes, they are it's magic vials. Poof, and it all works. But in any case, it's apparently it's nice. It can be nice. Uh, it depends a little bit on the paper, and I guess this is an ink that you might want to put in a pen write a letter with, then take it out of the pen, and apparently when you just put it in, it's it's not that dry yet, or something. I, I really don't know. You don't know. But don't uh, know. now, it's a sepia ink, but it dries gray? Yes. Wouldn't that be a well, great... That's, that's what I would say. Yeah, but I guess Wellman's gray didn't, didn't sound that cool. And you so. mentioned Nathan Tardif, yes. who, of course, uh, is Noodlers, makes all the inks, apparently he has by hand. Yeah. And you have recently, in your encyclopedia reviews, uh, yes. started to include the Tardif test. The Tardif test. Where you stick it's a correct. knife, uh, a pocket in knife, ink. in the ink, and then smear it on the paper. And that's fine. That's fine. We can, we can see the Tardif test. But what we're really interested in, Doc Brown, is mm -hmm. the Brown benchmark. We know that you can do something else. You've got all those uh -huh. samurai swords on the wall behind you. Certainly, yeah. you can come up with something. With so, a sword? I don't know. You well, have I guess, the world's largest prop room all around you. I know you can find something. So that's what I'll be looking I shall, for. Uh, I shall endeavor to, uh, to, to, to come up with something that is uh, the brown benchmark. I'm absolutely certain that this is going to work out. I mean, I could, I've, we, we've got two rats right here, so I guess I could dip their tails in the ink and, and smear <laughs> that in the paper. Or, oh, that's or, a good test. Let's <laughs> see if uh, Lisa Anderson actually watches FPTV. Doc Brown has two rats. They're pets. What are their names, Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay, take a guess because I'm really leading you into it now. If you if you know Doc Brown, if he was going to have two rats, what would he name them? Einstein and something else. Come on. Now, are you not a professor at college? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> Apparently not. Yeah, Einstein is a good guess. No, what are their names, Doc Brown? The names are, and this is not a lie, uh, Eric and Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa finds that quite amusing. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> and now uh, we you know. know. Un unlike me, I hang on every word that she says in her podcast. She apparently doesn't watch FPTV. Hmm. I just think... I guess if, if I were going to have pets that I named Eric and Dan, they would be bigger. <laughs> <laughs> these are probably big rats. We don't know how big these rats are. 
Now, unfortunately, I can't show you right now because I seem to be sleeping in a lot of uh, rubbish. I can tell you that that uh, Dan, Dan is is the, the 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 biggest one. He's the boss. He he commands <laughs> Eric around. Uh, Eric is more cuddly. He uh, he likes to be Eric petted, and and Dan Dan boss. bites you. Dan, Dan bites <laughs> you. He, I'm I'm not kidding. I he he made me bleed a couple of times. So it's uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, let's turn this into a pet show. <laughs> oh my. Um, you know, but, just a moment ago, I was stuck on pouring bleach on your writing, but the the, the rat thing is no, way better. <laughs> now I warned you. I did warn you about this. You I did. think I warned you. We we go anywhere. So okay, Mr. Smith, where are we going now? <laughs> uh, it's time to take a look at some paper, and I'm actually really interested in this. Um, coming from Twisby is some notebooks, and they're going to have three sizes: small, medium, and large. Uh, they'll have uh, 240 pages in them, and they'll be available in three styles, either blank, dot lines, or dot grid, and they're going to be pretty affordable, around uh, $10, $12, and $15. We don't know exact prices, but that's kind of the range they're shooting for. Uh, no word yet when they'll be available, um, but I, I have read that um, Speedy says he's tried hundreds of papers to find the perfect paper. I don't know how accurate that statement is, but um, he, he said he, he finally found one that he's happy with. Um, and so I know he knows fountain pens. I'm confident he has selected a good paper. I'm really excited to check these out. And Lisa has inside information about a possible release date. Ooh. <laughs> uh, I've been emailing back and forth with Philip uh, on a number of things, and he told me on Tuesday that the notebook should be available around the 17th of February, which is also... No, <laughs> he says 2013. Oh, he does, okay. Yep. Around the same time as the 580s. Oh, they're coming out about the same time, huh? Yes. <laughs> we, has anyone seen a picture of the 580s? Let's change the subject. It, well, <laughs> Do we know what they look like? Uh, they should be very, very similar to the 540s. All right, so this is they're just going down the path that Apple takes. And they're going to come out with a different pen every six months, get rid of the old one, make us all buy new ones. Dan, help me out here. Well, it's what they did with the Mini, right? You have the iPad and now the Mini. Twisby made the 540 and Except then the Except the Mini? difference is Twisby's actually improving their product with each step. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and now you can, you, yes, I will admit from the 530 to 540, that's obvious. But what are they doing from the 540 to the 580? We're way off the script here, but they're um, reducing the number of parts in the pen and it integrating the, the the piston mechanism design better, so that they're they'll reduce cracking there and around the grip section as well. So it's a redesign. Yeah, slightly. But, the, but I mean, the shape and and style will will be the same. So, hmm. or pretty close, anyways. Right. They won't look all that much different from the 540s. Right. And who's making the nibs? Cracker Jack? This should be Yovo. Yovo. Be. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Unless the new ones are Yovo, the same as, as the new nibs in the clear 700s. Yeah. Cool. We have an expert on hand. Um, speaking of an expert on hand, uh, generally speaking, we have an expert sitting in this chair, uh, Brian Anderson. Uh, put something at the website last week about uh, Renew Points, Estabrook Renew Points. If you are at all interested in trying to understand the numbering system <laughs> for the Renew Point nibs, this is the go-to article. There's 70 plus different Renew Point nibs that Estabrook made. They all have different numbers, they all have different styles, they all do different things. Some wash the dishes, some do the windows. <laughs> you have to go to the... Now I will admit the first time I ever went to a pen show was the LA Pen Show, and I was interested in Estabrooks, and I went to estabrook.net, which was and still is the Brian Anderson. Has that been a completely abandoned for AndersonPens.net? No, he, he still adds to it periodically, okay. um, but there what isn't that much more to add. What you can find there is a list of all the nibs, their numbers, and what they are, whether they're fine, medium, broad, nails, flexible, whatever. I took that whole list with me to the pen show just so I would have the reference material in front of me when I found an Estabrook. Um, so yes, I highly recommend this article by the great Brian Anderson. Uh, do you have anything to add, Lisa? Uh, no, I think he's great too. <laughs> you think he's great too? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's definitely the expert when it comes to that. Um, and he 
Uh, I'm often mistaken for the owner of Astrobrook.net, which is kind of funny to me. That is funny. Who, who in the world mistakes you for, as the owner? Well, I'm known for Estherbrooks as well. Yes, uh, you are the queen of Estherbrook. But um, he's more behind the scenes with that. But he has been working on this for years and years, and it is um, probably the most often referenced Estherbrook resource. Um, he's done a great job. In fact, we were talking about it the other day. He has a number of, of new pictures, including the, uh, the new pen he just found that needs to go up there. She, she tells me in the green room before the show, don't you mention that new pen because I don't know anything about it. Well, and I don't know anything about it. <laughs> I just of, know he was excited. Speaking of new pens, Dan, let's please talk about this new pen. Yeah, this new one from Stipula. This is the limited edition Gladiator fountain pen. And uh, you, you might recognize that name, and you should because not too long ago, Stipula released a Gladiator fountain pen. It, it wasn't a limited edition. It did feature that same sword clip, but this one is a limited edition. There's a few extra special items for this pen. It's limited to 193 pieces. It does come with the titanium T-Flex nib. It's a, a cartridge converter filler, but it can be used as an eyedropper as well. Uh, these pins are all made in Florence, Italy, and on the cap there, you see that that big piece of metal on the side. That's the the manica, the armor, the arm shield, like um, that they would carry to defend themselves. Um, and like I said, the clip is the Roman sword. Around the barrel is a lion's head gladiator belt, as kind of like the the center band. And the pin only comes in a deep translucent red. Um, unfortunately, we don't know exactly what that material is. But one cool thing that I really like about this pen is that the blind cap holds a pinch of sand from the Colosseum. Now, in the photos, I couldn't really make it out. I couldn't see this, but um, hopefully, it, you know, it, it's pretty evident if you have the pen in hand, or at least I would hope so. Um, so um, the, the limited edition Gladiator, um, it, it could be your trusty companion as you wage battle in the arena of everyday life. I love that line. <laughs> Uh, the price is pretty steep, though. MSRP on this is seven hundred and ninety-five dollars. Street price six hundred and thirty-six. Not even caring about it. Priceless. Yeah, this is the gaudiest pen in the world. Oh, for sure. Gaudy, gaudy, gaudy. Lisa, is yes. any pen going to carry this? Uh, if you would like us to special order it, I would be happy to do okay, so. Okay, so we can we can talk about it. Uh, <laughs> share our true feelings. I don't know. It just does nothing for me. I want to see the DNA <laughs> for, the, for the sand. The DNA. Yeah, right? <laughs> How do we know they just didn't go out to the parking lot and grab and if, a bowl of gravel? The, like. last, the last time I was in Rome, I think the floor of the Colosseum was gone. And there, you can look straight into the basement, or the cellars, I should say. So... There is no sand, as far as I can remember. So I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in how, how exactly that's put together. But, you know... But what about the looks, the looks of the pen? What do you think? Well, <clears throat> it has a sword for a clip. I mean, that's kind of awesome. If you could I mean, imagine, yeah. you could take that off and use it as a letter opener. That would be fantastic. But I guess you can't do that. Uh, it's it's. Yeah, I I'm agree. Sure with you, could. you just couldn't get it back on. You get it back on again. <laughs> I mean, super glue. It solves everything. But in any case, it's it's the um, uh, it, it, the the uh, I, I I like how this is so tacky that it actually becomes <laughs> fun. I mean, it's it's yeah. I I don't know. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't buy this, but I, I do think it's. I mean. People who like Rome, and there's a lot of the, the whole scene of, of people who collect Roman swords and Roman armor and stuff. This would this would strongly appeal to them, I guess. So I guess yeah, that's true. They only have to find 193 people. We had a question in the chat asking if, if Delta wrote the marketing material. The marketing <laughs> material is just, Dan said he liked it. I just found it very offensive. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, Dan. It's hilarious. But maybe it's the same PR firm that does it. Perhaps, perhaps. Another expensive pen coming up. Yeah, this one I actually do like. Um, I'd probably Very never nice. buy it, but um, you know, Graf von Faber Castell, they make a lot of gorgeous pens, and this one is the Intuition and the Platino Wood series. So, it it comes with their their large handmade two tone eighteen karat nib, which I've found to be excellent nibs. Um, seven different sizes, extra fine to double broad with oblique medium and oblique broad available. It comes in three different woods: a reddish. A reddish brown uh, Pernambuco wood, a dark brown Grenadillo wood, and a matte black ebony wood. Uh, 
Um, it, it is an expensive pin. It sells for eight ninety five. dollars um, The one very intriguing aspect of this pin is that the, the barrel and section is all one piece. So when you fill it, you actually take off, you remove that whole barrel, and then the converter is attached to the section, which is attached to the nib, and that's how you fill it. So there, there's no possible way you can get ink on the wood and, and stain it or anything oh, like that. Oh, I bet I could get ink on that wood. Well, yeah, you probably could. <laughs> You're always an exception. Um, and, and I actually posted a picture of the pin apart in the comments at this post so you, so you can get a better idea of how it fills and how it works. I'm not exactly sure how you get the the nib and the filling mechanism out of the barrel. I think it's just threaded, and so you'd have to get a good grip on the nib and feed, which is going to give you inky fingers. But, you know, you can always grab a, a tissue or a rag or something like that to, to pull that. I think uh, when uh, where the blind cap would be is a little hole, and you just put the pen in your mouth and blow, and the whole thing shoots across the room. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So it's a blow filler. That's a blow filler. Lisa, let me get your <laughs> thoughts on this pen. Uh, this one I like. I would buy it if it were 95, but I don't pay that kind of money for a pen. I like the um, the wood and metal combination. Anybody else care to jump in? I, it'd be it'd be nice if there was an easier way. I mean, I've I've never handled the pen, so I can't say for sure. But it'd be nice if there was an easier way to get the barrel off the pen. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think that's um, the Achilles heel. Brian Anderson in the comments, he makes a good point. If you have to grab the nib and feed and twist it to remove it, there is the possibility of misaligning the nib and feed. That can't be the way. That can't be the way they designed it. There must be something at the blind cap end. I but, I would hope so. Yeah, but I'm just until we know for sure. I'm going with the hole in the blind cap that you blow into it. And <laughs> I think it's a beautiful, beautiful pen, and I really like their pens. I've just never been able to afford one, and this one doesn't look like. The intuition, they, they do make a series out of resin, um, and I think that comes in white, orange, or black, and it's more, well, more affordable slightly. More affordable. I mean, it's, it's like four ninety five, but still um, pretty expensive. And I like, I like the, uh, the stamp on their nibs yes. and the, gra the, the graphs. They're just cool. cool. Very nice. Cool-looking nibs. Where are we going now? Well, we've got to have a place to store our fancy pens. One would think. And the perfect item for that comes from Wick Will, Rick Will. Uh, his wall hanging pen cases, these things are just gorgeous. They're made in Hawaii. They're available in nine different types of wood, um, but they are kind of expensive. I mean, for, for the large size that holds 16 pens, they're $500. And for the petite size that holds eight, they're 350 um, But they're an excellent way to show off your pens. I think if we could get something you know a little more affordable, I would definitely opt for something like this. Lisa Home Anderson. Depot. Home Depot. Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's 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 got to be the the wood that makes it so expensive. Yeah. Beautiful wood. Now tell me, Lisa, how many of these uh, the 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 full size hold sixteen pens? How many does Brian need? Uh, do you have a calculator? <laughs> <laughs> Far too many. Too too many. Our walls would fall down. Stephen, what do you think of these? I think they're very nice. I, <clears throat> I, I, I kind of like the idea of, of displaying your your pens like this as a as a, a, a type of art. I, I guess. I wonder what would happen if you would have some. Um, I'm trying to be the devil's advocate here. I, when you have some really nice old vintage, hard rubber pens that that. Um, Tire pens. Yeah, tire pens. <laughs> would they would they discolor if you if you know you 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 put them. I don't know. The sun is probably going to hit them at some point. Would that would that have any the effect? The sun will hit them, of course. Yes, uh, unless you know so, it's UV protected glass, which I doubt. But no, you don't doubt too. I don't want. I mean, to. I'm not sure what would happen. But I mean, if you would have modern pens that are not made of tires, then I guess you could. Uh, Even modern be pens, I don't want them sitting in the sun all day. So no, you'd have right. to put this on a wall that isn't sunny, beaten down by the sun for three hours right. a day because something bad will happen to your pens. But I just like it because you can see. I, in my mind, I would put pens that are not in my rotation at the moment. So right now, they are in my desk drawer, and I know they're there, and they're safe, but I don't get to see them, and they're beautiful, and I like to look at them. Sometimes I just open my desk drawer and say, hello, pens. But if they were just hanging here on the wall next to me, I, be, you're right. It would be like, a, like art, art, pen art. Um, that's what I like. Plus, it doesn't take any space on your desk yeah. because they, they do make, of course, uh, boxes, 
pen boxes that you can put your pens in, but then you're, you're giving away real estate. No, I like these. It's on my list. I already have one on hold. It's a Koa. Wow. Dan, do you have the dimensions of the two different sizes? Big and small. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, exact dimensions were not given. Well, they don't look all that big, so they wouldn't take up that much space. No, no, your wall, your wall can hold at least 10 of these. <laughs> Easily. Easily. Oh, Dan, let's talk about something I know must have you very excited. Yeah, are you talking about the new Twisby VAC-20 ink bottle? I am indeed. Yeah, this, we've been waiting on these for a long time. Um, they've, they're finally available. Um, $12.99 will get you one of four colors, I believe, black, blue, uh, Green, red, orange—is that five colors? That's five uh, colors. Um, these are uh, a twenty milliliter bottle. They're coined as travel size, and um, buying them in this config configuration, they they fit the Vac Seven Hundred, um, and only the Vac Seven Hundred. You you can't use it with other pens. Um, well, you can if you take the lid off. But the the design here is that the Vac Seven Hundred screws into the cap. It's it's threaded, so the same threads that the cap screws onto is how you attach it to the ink bottle. And you leave the nib on the 700. Yes, that's correct. Which um, is not what it, that the, for the 500 and the, what is that bottle that they use for that, the Diamond 50? Yeah, the Diamond 50. That, for that, that you was, take the nib, the section off? Correct. Okay. And so this, this is designed to get a, a one-shot full fill in the VAC 700. Um, you can do that with, with the special, you know, vacuum filling, instruction thing that you got to play with and can end up in a big mess. With this, you don't have that issue. Um, and the really neat thing about these is if you have a Diamond 50 bottle, the caps will interchange. So if you wanted to use this bottle to fill your 540s, you could easily do that. And if you wanted a larger bottle to fill your VAC 700s from, you could very easily do that. Eric, are you okay? I'm laughing because I'm having some sort of a memory of Doc Brown. Yeah, I know. With some okay. sort of a... a, a what oh, was his, that? his rocket, his uh, Viscotti. He made a rocket out of the Viscotti. Yeah, so, so, <laughs> so this is what happened. I had a traveling inkwell, bomb. which is this, made by Visconti. You put ink in there, and you put a pen on. I don't have one right now, but, I mean, you, you, you take off this cap. There's ink in there. You put on the pen, which just slides in there. This, is a, this has a tapered thing inside. So the pen is sort of, it fits snugly. Then you I make sure the cap is on there this time. And then you turn it around. And then you operate the piston or the, the converter or whatever, and it, it draws up ink, and you get a full fill. And someone, won't we'll mention any names, but someone suggested to me that I should do that with the VAC 700 and get a full fill. I do this, I turn the thing around, I push the plunger. But see, you pulled the plunger before you attached the pen, didn't you? So you no, I don't think so, because I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't really think this through. I thought, you know, this sounds awesome. So I, I do that, I push the plunger back, and it goes bang, and it flies off. And I sort of dodge it, go like, and it, it, it flies past me, and the ink just drops down. And uh, well, uh, let me put it this way I have turned the shirt into an ink cloth because there was nothing I could do. So uh, that's just the, the rundown. <clears throat> I'm going to send you one of these right away. But you yeah, have no tape. You have to video your, your playing around with this because we're, we're going to send this bottle flying across the room. We want to see it in slow motion. I, I can definitely do that, yeah. We're going to see Steven in one of those Tyvek suits like on Breaking Bad. <laughs> yeah. No, those His are for losers. I, just, you know. <laughs> I, think, I think Steven likes being showered in ink. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, I mean it, it, it fits the character, I guess, but it's... Uh, so, and twelve ninety nine, Dan, how many did you yes. order? I've not actually ordered any yet. Really? I yeah. thought you were going to be chomping at the bit for these yeah. things. All right, then moving right along. He's waiting until we get them in. That's right. Uh, you're going to carry them, right? Oh, absolutely. It's Twisby. Wait, and when do you expect them to come in, Lisa? Next week. Okay. Next week. Very nice. And I, I think everybody in this room has a VAC 700, do we not? Yep. Yeah, yep, I have so, this fire. It's a, actually I have it right here. Oh, yeah, this looks just like mine. Yes. Just like mine. Fantastic pen. Stephen, is yours blue as well? No, no, I don't like blue pens. Uh, you I, went I, with I, the I, amber. No, you I, like I orange went, pens. I do like orange pens, but I went with the the smoke. I think the gray, um, the gray version. Yeah. Gray version. Anyway, moving right along. 
We're back to you. I, I kind of like, you know, I don't like the blue, but I may like Fifty Shades of Grey, so I thought I'd... I'd yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. I don't know oh, how to segue. Good. How do we segue back? back? Well, this is bad because now we're talking about kids. Kids. All right, yes. Let's just talk about PCA. Yes. Earlier, you mentioned Pen Collectors of America has a pen for kids, pens for kids program. Can Correct. Tell us about that. Pens for Kids program, uh, we, we know that a lot of parents bring their children to pen shows. Uh, either they don't want to leave them home, they can't get a babysitter, or whatever. So we developed um, also for education, but it, it works out for entertainment as well. Uh, we have a presentation that we give at most of the shows whenever there are, are enough children present. And it's part education, part entertainment. It's very interactive, so we take the children through uh, a history of writing, and um, we make the connection between the actual handwriting and uh, typing, and and you know everything that they do now, forms of communication. And then at the end of the presentation, we give every child and the parents, if they're there, a free fountain pen. And then we help them, we teach them how to uh, install the cartridge, how to get the pen to start writing. And then the younger children can either just draw, you know, just draw doodles or their name. And the older children, uh, we usually ask them to write a thank you note, usually to their parents or grandparents, whoever brought them to the show. And this is highly popular, I understand. Oh, very much, very much. Uh, often we'll give out uh, a prize. Sometimes uh, different members will donate a prize, and so we'll give that out um, at the, the presentation. And, and kids love it. They get a free pen. Where do the, the free pens come from? Uh, sometimes we buy them. Uh, sometimes those are, uh, some pens are donated. Um, sometimes the pens that are donated are... Um, piston fillers or, or something that we really can't give to the children. The idea is to give them something a little uh, cleaner and easier. Okay. Um, we've, we've had some donated from, from lots of members, but they don't always work as well. Sometimes the, the cheaper ones um, are harder to start. Uh, so we, we sometimes so buy them. I have a, a Pelicano Go, and if I wanted to donate that, how would I do that? You would just send it to, to me. Um, I'm the, the keeper of the pens. Can and then I we find that address on the website, or do I have to contact you directly? No, it's uh, P.O. Box 992, Appleton, Wisconsin, 54912. We'll have that in the show notes. Watch all these pens arrive. A very, very important question now. What is your cat's yes. name? Uh, we have two. Oh, the, the one that just walked by. Uh, the black British. one? Or, oh, no. that's... The orange one? Yes. Uh, that's Crash, named after a video game. And the other one's Crash named? Bandicoot? Crash Bandicoot. My son ah. named him years ago. Uh, the other one is Brooke. Brooke? As in... Crash. As in... Brooke, as in... Shields. <laughs> Esther Brooke? Brooke, Esther Brooke. So you need one that's Esther and one that's Brooke. What happened to Esther? <laughs> Okay. Um, <laughs> speaking of the Pens for Kids program, getting donated pens, uh, I understand a huge batch annually will come from AndersonPens.net. What kind of pens will those be? Those will be Platinum Preppies. Wow. Um, we have found that those are, are reliable. They come in all sorts of different colors, and they each come with a cartridge already. Yeah, it's um, a great pen for a kid. It is. It is. So most of these kids that are in the program, this is, is this going to be the first time they write with a fountain pen? Or because they were brought by a parent or grandparent that's already involved, they kind of know what a fountain pen is already? A little of both. Um, mm -hmm. Many of them know that you know mom or dad or grandma and grandpa are interested in this. Um, some of them think it's weird. Some of them think it's fun. Uh, some of them have a, a whole collection already. Wow. Um, but everybody's excited about a free fountain pen. Yes, so, even I'm excited. I, I, I might, I'll just go there and yeah. you I'll, you can I'll do the scavenger hunt. I'll give you a free pen. What is the scavenger scavenger hunt? I don't know anything about that. Well, uh, the other thing that we do, uh, and another part of the reason that um, Brian and I are donating, uh, we have a standing donation that we've given so that the PCA doesn't have to buy them anymore, is we do a scavenger hunt. At some of the shows, we don't have enough children um, to do an actual presentation, but we have 
children here and there, we give them a list of 11 different objects to find that are very commonly found at pen shows. <laughs> yep, that's it. Uh, and then they, um, they go around and it teaches them a number of things that we believe are good life lessons. You have to learn how to approach someone, a stranger. You go up to the different vendors and you have to say, I'm doing the, the Pens for Kids scavenger hunt. Uh, and then the vendor will see what's on the list, find something, and show it to the child and demonstrate it, show how it works or what it is, what's interesting or unique about it. And then the vendor signs off next to the item. And then when the child is done, they bring back the completed form and we look it over and make a big deal of, you know, oh, you found everything on it. And then they get to pick another free fountain pen. Wow. Nice. Uh, yes, I, I've got uh, through you through the Freedom of Information Act. Fountain Pen Geeks did obtain a copy of the list of items that are on the scavenger hunt. Uh, it was quite it was redacted quite well by PCA, but you get an idea of the full list is at the website. I'm showing the first five. Uh, there's a vintage something fifty one. I have no idea what that might be. <laughs> I would I would guess a Parker fifty one, but then I wouldn't know why they put vintage on there. Is there a modern Parker 51 that I'm not aware of? There's a reissue several years ago. Ah, so a vintage Parker 51. A dip something. And a something loop. I'm noticing a typo, actually. Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> <laughs> and a pen something or a nib something. See, I think adults should get in on this, too. Because the first thing I want to do with this list is go to a pen show and find all these things. Some of them are really interesting. So, Lisa, what's the usual age range of kids that participate? Uh, usually anywhere from about three or four up to about 12 or so. Once you get older than 12 or 15, um, 12, 13, 14, you really don't want to do it um, because what you, you know, what you get is not, um, you know, it's, it's a, a $4 pen. Uh, if you're 12, 13, 14, and you're a pen collector, you've probably cr progressed, excuse me, on from there. But uh, seven, eight, nine, they're all excited about it. And um, if if somebody joins Pen Collectors of America uh, and and pays the membership fee, a portion of that fee supports the Pens for Kids program. Yes or no? Uh, yes. That was a qualified yes. <laughs> well. Most of the membership fees goes towards producing the pennant. Okay. Goes towards the publication fee, uh, things like that. So, but some of the membership fee does support the pens for kids program, or is it pens for? Is it mostly autonomous? You get no, the, donations and we we get donations, and uh, we also had um, uh, a member donate his collection of pens. And so we are selling those on eBay and it shows. And part of that proce the proceeds from that sale goes into the big general fund and it, it goes where it needs to go, either to the, the publishing fees or you know, Lisa, that buying was the pens. That's, that's the Nan Curvis collection, right? Correct. Um, how often do you list pens on eBay? Uh, Bill Hong used to be on the board of directors and he handled that. And then even after he dropped off the board, after his term ended, um, he's continued to do that. He tries to get something up about once a week, um, okay. but it depends on his schedule. And, and we are grateful for his time and effort. Um, you know, he knows that I, I wish we could do more faster, but that's what he can do, and we are thrilled to have, you know, to have him continue to do that. And is, is there way? I'm sorry. Is there any way of people to be notified other than, say, following your eBay account? I mean, is it Twitter or the, the the website or anything like that? We put it on Facebook. Bill okay. usually posts something every time he puts up a new pen, uh, and then usually Janet or Julie will tweet that as well. Okay. Very good. So if you follow us on on Facebook or Twitter, uh, you're notified that a new pen goes up. Um, none of them are spectacular rare pens, not anymore, uh, but they're all just good users, good writers, and um, we actually got the first portion of the donation, and we have another thousand pens coming to us down the road. Wow, but you can also follow them on eBay, correct, Dan? You follow a seller on eBay, don't you? 
Right. You can subscribe to a seller and be notified when they list new items. Right. Okay. So you subscribe to the, do we know the PCA seller name by any chance? I should know that. I think it's PCA pens. PCA pens on eBay or follow them on so. Facebook. Like them on Facebook, follow them on yeah. Twitter, buy some of these pens, support the PCA. So if I'm a member and yes. I, I, I am supporting, I'm, I'm getting the magazine, the pennant, which will eventually also be in digital format. I have access to this incredible library of, what are we calling the library? Vintage material. We also have, well, it's not just vintage. We also uh, just negotiated with Penworld so that we will have some of the old uh, and even current Penworlds online. Very nice. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah. Uh, we worked with Susan Bowen to do that. And uh, we have you know, all the issues of the pennant, of course. Um, and then we also have some, some really interesting pages from old pen worlds with uh, cartoons on them. So those are kind of fun. Bad cartoons? No, these are good cartoons. Oh, these are good cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Sorry, <don't> Tim. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, uh, I'll be there. Uh, you're doing this in Los Angeles, the Pens for Kids program, right? Uh, I think that we'll have a small scavenger hunt available, but I think I'm going to be the only one there, so if we're busy, um, I may enlist you to help me, Eric. You may. As I long may. as I get to participate in the scavenger hunt, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I picture you like the pied paper with this little gaggle of children <laughs> following behind you. All right, let's go to the next table. Get out your list. That could be fun. That could be fun. Uh, shall we move on to mail and email? Last week uh, we heard uh, we had a question from Kai, if we remember correctly. Kai was saying that the the section on his Twisby Mini, his Twisbini, he found it to be too slippery and it was difficult to keep a good grip on. And we talked about that for a while. And I suggested. Uh, I, first of all, I said I didn't have that problem, but if I did, I would have no problem getting some fine, fine sandpaper and just giving a little texture to the section that would probably uh, help the slippery syndrome problem thing. And uh, we heard back from Kai this week, and I'm just going to read the email. While still watching last week's show, I found a fingernail buffing stick. I took the section off the fully inked Twizbinny and went to work with the stick's smooth side. Ten seconds later, the section had so much traction it practically stuck to my fingers. I then used the shine side of the stick to polish it a little. A minute later, I was a very content guardian of a custom traction Twizbinny. The matte finish is barely noticeable but made a huge difference. So there we have We helped somebody. We actually helped somebody. <laughs> All the way in Australia. And uh, I'm tempted to do that just because I think it's a cool idea. As If you remember last week, I was kind of liking the idea, even though I don't have that problem. Uh, as far as I know, what else did we get this week? It's for mail? Yeah. Mm, nothing else, I think. Does anybody have any... I, I, I don't have any recent acquisitions. I'm waiting on some things in the mail. Uh, Dan, I don't see anything listed for you. Did you not get any well, acquisitions? I, I got a, a, a non-pen item. <laughs> A uh, new guitar? What? No, I, I got a new cell phone. Oh, right. What'd you get? Cool. The Galaxy Note 2. And and just to show you how large this is, this is my previous phone. That looks like, like a, a, a Nook or an e-reader or something. It, That's a phone? Yeah, it's a phone. It's, it's massive, but it's awesome. I love it. I just got it last night, so I'm enjoying that. Um, if I remember correctly, you tweeted yesterday that you were upset you were stuck at work knowing your phone was going to arrive and you couldn't get to it. Yes, I hate that. Stupid UPS. They won't like re-deliver to the main office in our apartment complex, so I had to reschedule to get them to hold it at the facility, and so then I wasn't able to pick it up until 7 o'clock. And I hate it when that happens because I already had to wait a week for it to ship. Doesn't the same thing happen with pen supplies and stuff like that? Yes. Delivery is always a problem. Always a problem. Congratulations on the phone. Thank you. Um, we'll move to you. And I have a special question for Lisa. So, Doc Brown. Yes. <laughs> Recent acquisitions. I see. Oh, yeah. I want to show whether you were. Okay. Um, yes. <clears throat> Someone that is Lawrence. Lawrence was kind. He's not Lawrence of Arabia, by the way. <laughs> it was my another first Lawrence. Year. Another Lawrence from the U.S was um, uh, kind enough to, to send me a, a, um, a Pilot Metropolitan, um, which is nice because I, I wanted to try that out uh, for a while. 
uh, and, and it's a pretty nice pen. So the, the, the review uh, was shot this morning and shall be uploaded tomorrow. Uh, it's a fifteen dollar pen, if I'm not mistaken, and it's uh, surprisingly decent. I would say it's it it feels decently I don't know. made. Is surprisingly decent, a compliment or an insult? Yes, no, 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 no. It's absolutely a compliment. I I wasn't. Okay. I mean, w w w for example, um, there were some you know cheaper fountain pens out there. When you 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 pick them up, they feel cheap. They just you know they they feel plasticky, whatever. And this really feels like a and that could actually be a bit more expensive. It's it's a lot of metal, so it has some weight to it. Uh, I like the way it, it's it's. I mean, it has a good shape. Uh, you can exchange the nibs with the Pilot Plumix, for example, giving it an italic nib, which is and that's also a fairly inexpensive pen. So it, it's not you know very costly to do that. So that's that's pretty cool, I would say. You're having a, a lot of fun in the pen world, yes, ma'am. Sorry. It's a great writer for fifteen bucks. Mm. Yes, I agree. That's uh, that's that's pretty cool. And there's something else listed by your name under recent. Yes, I'm, 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 I'm figuring out whether I can just reach for it. I cannot wait. Here we go. I'll wait here for you. No, I got it. I got this was a sort of a suggestion from someone on YouTube uh, to to get this book, the ultimate book of pens, which is um, well, oh. the ultimate book of pens, I guess. Uh, it's it's a large book. I mean, this is a serious serious That's book. Huge. Um, I think it's over 400 pages. Yeah, that's approaching the book 500. That, that's the book that tells you not to swap out your nibs, right? Yeah, what? there is some interesting suggestions in there. You should never uh, try to, to switch nibs yourself. And um, it, it's it's not just fountain pens. It's ball points. It's also mechanical pencils. Uh, it's but you know you you've got to work with what you've got, and it's it's. Uh, uh, it is, as you can see... All those areas are redacted, right? It's just blacked out with a marker. Yeah, uh, it, it is now. Um, it's it's not sponsored at all by anyone, as you can see here. Oh, so no, those are not, not advertisements. You know, not not full-page spreads with brand names, but, you know, it's it's a, a trilingual book, and it's it's quite nice. I mean, it's just eye candy. If it's nothing else, it's just, you know, funny to, to leave through and see beautiful full-page spreads of nice pens. Okay. So, I, I'm envious. I know. Okay, good. <laughs> Lisa, you're in the spotlight right now, and I have a specific yes, question about recent acquisitions. The last pen show you went to was? Philadelphia. And since the Philadelphia show, we have seen two AndersonPens.net podcasts from the Anderson Pens radio network. Brian, are you still in the chat room? You can say hello. Oh, I have to reconnect since I'm going to be talking about Anderson Pens. Um, and on both of those uh, podcasts, we have heard... I would say ad nauseum, but we're also interested. <laughs> All about everything that Brian got at the pen show. Yes. Is, what did you get at the pen show? Uh, I didn't buy anything. Lisa Anderson went to the Philadelphia pen show and didn't buy anything? That's like headline news. No, I, I go to look, and uh, I, I have a hard time filling the gaps in some of my collections. I started to tell Brian that maybe I just need to start collecting new pens, I different think, actually, brands. You need to expand your collection, yeah. but I'm, I'm waiting here in the chat to see what Brian, Brian, in case you didn't know it, Lisa, Brian's in the chat, and he's giving us information specific to you behind your back. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't collected, I mean, my, my newest acquisition was my Christmas uh, Aurora 75th anniversary. I mean, it's hard to shop after that. Brian's not being helpful in the chat, so we're going to have to take your word for it. You bought nothing at the Philadelphia Pen Show. Have you had any recent acquisitions? Other than the 75th anniversary and the uh, the Anderson Edison LE, no. Open any new bottles of ink recently? Oh, that I have. Uh, what's your most recent new bottle of ink? Uh, let's see, the uh, Pilot, the new Roshizuku inks. And, oh, how do you uh, like the, the charcoal? The, I think it's charcoal, the Tamusumi. It, Takasumi, it's uh, the, ch the bamboo charcoal, it's a black that's actually new for Pilot, they don't have any other blacks in the Orochizuku line. It's, it's, uh, it's my attention, is it uh, really, really black or is it more charcoal? It's more charcoal, it's, okay. it's a nice deep color considering the rest of the line. Uh, is it the darkest, blackest ink I've ever seen? No. Yeah, that's it is what I want, I want something light black. <laughs> It, it is. It's certainly not a gray. It's not a, a dark smoke. It's it's a black that that dries to a a nice. I almost want to call it a soothing charcoaly color. Cool. I think it's pretty. Yeah. 
I think our swabs should be up on our site so you could see it, but uh, it's it's a nice color. It's not, like I said, not the blackest thing that's out there, but um, it, it works well with the rest of the line. No, and, and the fact that it's not the blackest is actually what has my attention because you know, I've gone through my gray period where I was looking for the perfect gray and I never really found one. So I want a little blacker now, so I was thinking this might be something that I could try. It's got my attention. Like I say, charcoal sounds good to me. So did you actually go through 50 shades of gray or just... <laughs> there we go again. There we go. I probably did. You know, I, I filled out several of those ink notebook journal type things. Uh, and I, f I finally settled on the uh, Iroshizuku, what is it, the gray one, that whose name escapes me at the moment. Lisa, do you happen to know the gray one? <laughs> the, there are two. Okay. You're going to quiz me now. I don't no. Know. Who, who remembers? Uh, it's, it's, let, let's just call it Iroshizuku Brian Gray. Then, then we sort of there we go. Iroshizuku Brian Gray. <laughs> Brian Gray. Um, we're about to wrap up. Uh, I have a couple of announcements to make. Uh, Doc Brown and I will be in a special hangout tomorrow, Sunday, January 27th, starting at 10.30 a.m. Pacific time. 10.30 a.m. Pacific. All we're going to do is have a couple of pens with us and fill them with ink and talk about them and shoot the breeze for about a half an hour. Uh, the public is invited, but apparently you'll need to send us an email so we can invite you to the Hangout. So if anybody's interested in that, uh, find a way to contact me and we'll make sure you get an invitation to the Hangout. Uh, the other thing is uh, that I just sprung on everybody this morning, if you're at all familiar with NaNoWriMo, which is National, Write National Novel Writing Month, uh, FP Geeks is starting Inkorimo, which is International Correspondence Writing Month, which will be the month of February. Uh, the website for it just went up last night. It is not not complete at all. It is a just the scaffolding is there. Uh, it is Inkorimo.org. Uh, please keep an eye on that uh, if you're at all interested in in taking the challenge in the month of February of writing one letter per day every day for the month of February. Details coming soon. I see we're, we're missing Dan. Um, so for the moment, I'm just going to tell people how they can contact us. You can contact us via email podcast at fpgeeks.com. You can call us, as Tim Hoffman did, at 415-685-GEEK, 415-685-4335. We are on Twitter, twitter.com slash fpgeeks. Facebook, facebook.com slash fpgeeks. We have a website, fpgeeks.com. We have a forum, fpgeeks.com slash forum. Our mailing address is Fountain Pen Geeks, P.O. Box 728, Ankeny, Iowa, 50021. I'm going to say a big thank you and hello to our newest advertiser, I believe it's a new advertiser. It's Tree Ring Pens. We all remember Tree Ring Pens because they're cool and neat. I also want to say thank you, thank you, Lisa Anderson, for being here with us today. I'm just going to make you big here so everybody can see you while you say how much <laughs> fun it was for you to be here on the show. Did you have a good time? I had a blast. I mean, I've, I've met all of you in person, so I knew that it would be a good time. Uh, and it was just like hanging out at a show. Yeah, it is kind of like hanging out on the show, except you still owe us the definition of your obscure word, which scripts something or other. Uh, well, I have two questions first. Oh, okay. I'm going to take you off center stage. <laughs> <laughs> Question number one. Uh, Inkorimo. Inkorimo.org. Does, does a note, like a note card count, or does it have does to a be a note, a postcard? I think there'll be some stipulation that your correspondence of the day has to be at least 20 words. Okay. So okay. it's completely doable. Okay. And uh, Stephen, during the ink flushing and filling presentation tomorrow, will you be using the Visconti <laughs> traveling ink pot? I, I guess so. I don't see any reasons why not. <laughs> uh, I'm sure he has it down by now. He can probably do that uh, without much trouble. Oh, and yeah. Dan's here uh, just in time to get the definition of the obscure word. Scripturient is having violent desire to write. A violent desire to Steven, write? Stephen was very close with strong, but mm. uh, three or four different definitions that I saw said violent, and I thought that that would be a good choice for today. Cool. Script, wow. You're going to have to send that to me in, in the email. <laughs> put it in the show notes, because I will not remember that. Sure. I've already told everyone how to contact us, Dan. I've thanked Tree Ring Pens. I was in the middle of thanking Lisa Anderson and hearing how much she enjoyed being with us on the show. And then I got her definition. And now I want to thank our viewers. And that's it for me. Anybody else have anything? 
I guess not. So until next week, this is Fountain Pen Television. Say goodbye, Lisa. Bye.